So, dear brothers uh, in Christ, uh, greetings to you all in the uh, name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ uh, and uh, one and supreme God. Uh, uh, dear brethren, so last week, uh, as you all know, we studied about uh, part one of Jesus Christ. Uh, so, we have seen uh, that uh, Christ uh, is uh, the, what is Christ? Who is Jesus Christ? Tell me. Jesus Christ is the son of God, a beloved, okay. beloved son of God. Good. Okay. Krishna Badar? Krishna Badar, you are there? Yes, sir. I'm here. Ah, brother, who is Jesus? Stop by it to my daughter. Uh, yes, sir. Who is Jesus? Yeah, uh, last time you thought Jesus Christ is son of God and he is created also. Good. Okay. Do you believe it? Yeah, I'm understanding now. Good. Okay. Thank you for that. So let us continue. See, uh, so, so how was Jesus, uh, uh, if you see dear brethren, uh, before even the world was created, uh, Jesus was created and uh, he was the first ever creation of God. Last week we studied that uh, he himself says that even before uh, Abraham was, I am. So, uh, even in the prayer of Jesus, he requested the Father that he glorify him with the glory which he had with him even before the world was made. That means, this clearly shows that the Jesus existed with the Father, even the whole world was created. Okay? And uh, he was the first and beginning of uh, creation of God. If God ever wanted to do anything, let it be anything, and the uh, creation was of Jesus himself. So he is the first creation of God. And uh, here the verse clearly says that he is the uh, image of the invisible God. So rest all the creations, uh, let it be anything, the visible, invisible things, though it be thrones, uh, principalities, uh, all the mighty universe, everything was created through Jesus and by our Lord Jesus Christ and for him. Therefore, Jesus in the Bible is called as the Alpha and the Omega. What is the meaning of Alpha and Omega? If you see in Revelation 1 8, last week we studied, that is the first and the last Greek letter. You see, that means uh, he is the first and he is the last. That means from A to Z. In God's creation, Jesus is A to Z. That means he is the only direct creation of God. Rest all creation of God he is created, you see, through. Jesus, but only Jesus uh, is created directly by God Himself. Therefore, the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ is totally different when compared to the glory of all the other creations of God. Let us read uh, one verse, brother John 1 14. Brother, can uh, somebody read, brother John 1 14? And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and trust. See, we saw Jesus, I think, sir. And how did you see the glory of Jesus? Sir? It is not the same glory of, uh, you see, angels, sir. No. no, it is not uh, the same glory, even of uh, Lucifer, dear brethren. It is the glory of. Uh, only son of God. So Jesus is having this special glory. What is the special glory? The one who is uh, the only son of God. You see, if he is the only son of God, what uh, glory, you see, what grace he will be having, that glory uh, Jesus had it seems. Uh, you see, the glory which uh, the only begotten son of God had, this was a uh, in Jesus Christ. Therefore, dear brethren, when compared to all the other creations, you see, all the other angels, and even the other morning star, Jesus' glory is totally different. It is much glorious than all the creations of God. Therefore, you see, dear brethren, in the Bible, you see, huh? it is uh, Jesus is called the express image of God. That means uh, exact, exact Xerox of God, it seems. Hebrews 1 3, brother. Muslim brother, can you read? Okay, brother. Hmm. Who begin the brightness of his glory and 
the express image of his person see and up uh, what is he who jesus you see he is the brightness of god's glory it seems underline it he is the brightness of god's glory and uh, express image of his person what do you mean by express image huh exact xerox you see so all the qualities all the character which uh, god was having it is exactly to the point uh, reflected uh, in jesus uh, therefore he is called as the brightness of his glory express image of his person then brother huh? and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself brought our sins sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high he sat down where though he was the express image of god he did not sit on god he did not sit huh? on the same place of god what does he say he sat on the right hand of the majesty of high he sat on the right hand of god you see then sir we all remember you see jesus was speaking much about his father 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 and all once uh, you see uh, his disciple philip uh, came and asked jesus uh, master you are saying so much about your father uh, i request you please uh, show us uh, your father once uh, please show us your father once uh. what was the reply of uh, jesus uh, jesus said he that uh, see me has seen the father isn't it jesus said if he have seen me then it is means that uh, you have seen the father what is the meaning of that one read brother john 14:9 krishna brother can you read brother john 14:9 sorry sir i am holding my daughter so i am unable to open my bible okay okay mausam brother can you read brother jesus said unto him have i been so long time with you and at has do not known me philip he that hath seen me has seen the father and how says the then so us the father huh? so what does jesus say how can you say that show the father he that has seen me has seen father does it mean that uh, jesus himself is father ah, no, no 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 you see he says all the characters all the qualities which the father is having is exactly reflected in jesus hence if you see jesus it is like seeing the father doesn't mean that uh, both are uh, one and the same last week you have seen no huh? what did jesus say i and the father one means what not one and the same one has a mind and purpose that is the reason you see it is like seeing uh, you see father because no man can see god uh, no man has seen god at any time uh, is the invisible uh, god uh, you see dear brethren therefore read uh, john 519 brother john 519 why does it say so because all the things uh, which god does you see jesus does the same john 519 brother hmm. then answer jesus and said unto them verily verily i say unto you the son can do nothing of himself but what he see the father do for what things sover he does this also does the son likewise ah you see what did the jesus say huh? whatever the father does the same huh? the son does likewise the same thing everything i can do nothing of myself so where do i take everything from my father therefore if you see jesus it is like seeing you see the father read john 12:45 brother john 12:45 uh, read more some brother uh, and he that sees me sees him that sent me mm, see and he that uh, sees me sees him that uh, sent me and he was in because all the qualities was expressed in jesus this is not a little seeing brother because uh, you see Uh, the bible also says uh, that uh, as uh, you see huh? what uh, as uh, god uh, is uh, reflected in christ it also says uh, that uh, you see 
the life of Christ also should be uh, manifested in our body. This is Jesus says so many many times. Uh, now you see, you see, I see. Uh, uh, so seeing means what? Uh? Seeing means understanding. Uh, you see, it is not detail. Uh, seeing. Uh, Jesus said, no, he that has eyes, let them see. He that has ears, let them hear. So this is actually speaking about uh, not literal seeing, uh, but uh, understanding. Uh, you see, uh, read, brother. Uh, 2 Corinthians 4.11, brother. 2 Corinthians 4.11. Oh. For, for we which live are always deliver unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. Ah, see, why? Because the life of Jesus made me manifest in our mortal body, it seems. Life of Christ made me manifest in our body, it seems. How does it uh, manifest to your brethren? You see, dear brothers and uh, Christ, uh, you see how? How Jesus' life is manifest? Uh, not literally. You see, it is by our exemplification. It is by our character. It is by our, you see, behavior. That is how we can manifest uh, the life of Christ uh, in our body. It is the same way with uh, Jesus. Hence, Jesus is called as Emmanuel. Emmanuel means what? Emmanuel means God with us. No? How God is with us? It is through Jesus that God is with us. Okay. So, Jesus, hence in the Bible, is called as a morning star. You see? The meaning of morning star is that planet Jupiter is called as morning star. So, why it is called as morning star? If you see, early in the morning, around 3 a.m., a bright star shines in the sky, it seems. That is actually planet Jupiter. So this signifies that these are the early creations of God. So who is the morning star in the Bible? If you see, Jesus is called as the morning star in the Bible. Revelation 22, 16. Isn't it? Uh, and is there any other morning star in the Bible? Krishna Badar, is there any other morning star? Yes, sir. In Lucifer book of yes. Israel, Lucifer also called morning star. Very good, brother. Excellent. Very good. So, there are two morning stars. Sir. Okay. Then, uh, were the two morning stars uh, together at some time? Yes, they were some together. Yes. Previous time. They were together. When, if you see, in Job 39 chapter, it says, during the creation of this earth. So, this clearly means that, uh, you see, huh, as a uh, Jesus was a morning star. Similarly, Lucifer also was a morning star. It seems. They were both, you see, on the same level. Both were called as morning stars. Now, what does it mean? This means that as Jesus was created in one level, even Lucifer was created on the same level. Correct? No? That's what it means. See, both are morning star means what? Both should be on the same plane, same level. Okay? Now, let us see on what level was they created. Like, for example, you see, there are different uh, levels of creation, dear brother. Correct, now? There are animal life. There is uh, human life. This is all related to earth. But if you, you see, uh, move on the top, there is a spiritual life also. There are angels, uh, you see, in heaven. Correct, now? And above them, for there, there are archangel also is there in the Bible. But above all, who is there? Huh? God is there. So there are different, uh, you see, levels of life. Correct, no? Animal life is there. And uh, above the animals, humans are created. And angels are created much above than the angels. And for all these angels, there is a chief uh, of uh, angel. Okay? And above that one is God. Okay. Now, uh, what is the meaning of this one? Huh? Now, uh, I'll ask you one question. Let me see who is going to answer this question. Huh? What is the difference between God and the angels? Before that one, I'll ask one more question. What is the difference between God and human beings? You tell me. 
god is uh, human beings are the creation of god god was good alpha and omega good okay then anything else krishna brother anything else all are creation god is creator good very good point okay and one more thing is that god is spiritual being we are fleshly being correct no yes correct okay good now can god die god never dies yes correct is immortal but what about human beings human beings human beings dies correct okay now let us come to the level of angels okay if you come to the level of angels do the angels or can the angels die ಡಿ If God wants to destroy them, they can be destroyed. They can die. Okay. Yeah. Krishna Bhadar, correct, no? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, God cannot die. This is the major difference between the angels and God. The only difference between angels and God is that God is immortal and all the angels are mortal. You see, dear Bhadar? So, angels are mortal. They can die. but god is immortal this is the only difference between god and angels now what about jesus jesus was in heaven with god uh, did he have immortality when he was created he has died because so that i think uh, unflesh uh, being unflesh he has not immortal Ah, until he died on the cross, he was not immortal. Correct, no? See, yeah. even when he was with God in a spiritual being, when he was created, he was created on the same level of the angels. So, there was always a possibility for him to die. That is the reason he came and died on the cross. So, the difference between the angels and God we have seen even jesus was created on the same angelic nature that means what he was created with the possibility of death but uh, you see dear brethren let me ask you one more thing so if jesus and angels are created on the same level uh, is there no difference between uh, jesus and the other angels is there a difference he was beloved jesus was a bit beloved son mm. okay but uh, uh that shows clearly that uh, jesus is greater than all the angels correct no mm-hmm. right now the beloved son so that i yes. think he was called the only beloved son very good yeah, and and god uh, sent only jesus for the savior of the human kind no very good uh, he uh. doesn't send uh, angels uh. for the crucifixion and the savior of mankind but he sent jesus christ so that i think he is a bit uh, higher than higher. angels yeah very good brother that is what the bible clearly says let us read a few verses you see probs 8 chapter 22 probs 8 22 probs 8 22 the lord proceed me in the beginning of his way before his work of old oh he was the beginning of god's creation verse 30 31 then i was by him as one brought up with him and i was daily his delight ah. rejoicing always before him see i was daily his delight so who is god's favorite son if you see it is jesus 
rejoicing always before him as the son is rejoicing always before the father same way then next brother ha huh? Rejo uh, rejoicing in the habit habitable part of his earth and my delights with with the son of man aha uh -huh. rejoicing in the habitable parts of the earth uh, and he was delighting in the sons of man he was so much uh, interested uh, you see about people about human you see hence uh, when they sinned jesus was always ready to die for them okay so here you see jesus was always the father's delight it seems huh? this verse or this type of verse god never says to any of the angels read one more verse hebrews first chapter verses 4 to 8 brother hebrews first chapter verses 4 to 8 brother uh being made so much better than the angel as he had by inheritance obtain a more excellent name than they ah wait so, wait brother underline brother see observe it clearly jesus was so much better than angels though he was on the same nature understand please see jesus was on the same nature it seems but yet he is so much better than the angels and he had obtained a excellent name it seems he has got a beautiful and a uh, high you see name among all the angels it seems then continue with that ha huh? for unto which of the angels said he at any time though art my son this day have i begotten time begotten ah, the did god say to any of the angels that you are my son i have begotten you no 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 god has mentioned this one only to his son jesus saying you are my son i have created you directly then but the next uh, i will be and again i will be to him a father and he shall be to me a son hmm. and again when the bright in the first begotten into the world he said and let all the angel of god worship him ah. and uh, you see when god brought jesus you see ha huh? when god created ha huh? jesus ha huh? when god brought jesus to this world what did god say let all the angels worship jesus so all the angels were supposed to be submitting to jesus that means jesus was head of all this uh, angels correct no if all the angels yeah. were uh, supposed to be subject to jesus that means jesus is above all this angels then he, he should be the head of all these angels you see correct no uh, read the verse again brother uh. and again when the bright brighten in the first begotten bringeth bringeth when he bringeth uh. when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world he said and let all the angels of god worship him uh, let all the angels of god worship him that means he should be worshiped even by the angels that means the angel should be submit to jesus correct na then that means what uh, jesus is on top of all the angels okay yeah uh, is there any verse that uh, jesus is uh, on top of all the angels that is greater than the angels read songs of solomon 5 10 songs of solomon 5 10 brother huh? mm. krishna brother you are listening now observing yes sir i am listening good good uh my beloved is white and ruddy the chiefest among 10000 ah chiefest among 10000 if there are 10000 you see angels who is the chiefest jesus jesus is above all the you see angels superior to the angels read one more verse brother 
Job thirty-three was twenty-three and twenty-four, brother. Okay, brother. If there be a messenger with him, an interpreter, one among a thousand, to show unto men his uprightness, then is gracious unto him and said, Deliver him from going down to the pit. I found a ransom. Oh. What does it say? If there be a messenger with him, that word messenger, you see, actually comes from the same word angel. If there be an angel with him, you see, a messenger with him, what? An interpreter. Why interpreter is mentioned? I'll tell you in a few minutes now. See, interpreter. Underline that word interpreter. Why Jesus is called the interpreter? Now, who is he? One among a thousand. You see? So, among the angels, the chiefest among the thousand. Who is this one? Who is this one? Jesus Christ. Very good. Uh, hence, Jesus is called as the chiefest of the angels or he is called as the archangel in the Bible. Okay. Brother, is there a verse if you ask? Yes. Archangel is called for Jesus Christ. First Thessalonians 4 chapter 16th verse. Brother. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the sound, with the voice of the archangel, wait, 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 wait. with the trump. What, brother? Who shall descend with from heaven? With the voice brother? of the archangel. Correct. Who shall come from heaven, it seems, sir? Uh, Who shall come? With the... Sorry, brother? Who shall come from heaven? Lord. Very good. Who is he? What's his name? Archangel. What's his name? Jesus Christ. Very good. So it is Jesus Christ who shall come from heaven. Heaven. He'll, he shall come with a voice of? Sound. Ah, voice of voice what? Voice of the archangel. Very good. And that means, who is the archangel? He is Jesus Christ. Yes. See? So archangel is none other than no, not Jesus Christ. Read one more verse, brother. Daniel 12, 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince who is stand for the children of the people, and there shall be time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time the people shall be delivered everyone that shall be found written in the book. Mm. What do you say? Who shall stand it, Simsa? Michael. Correct, na? Michael yeah. shall stand it, Simsa. If Michael shall stand, there should be a great time of trouble, it seems. So who is this Michael? You see? This Michael is again the archangel. He is given the name of uh, Michael. You see? Read uh, Jude 9, brother. We'll again come back to Daniel. Read uh, Jude 9. The one book before Revelation. Jude verse 9, brother. Yet only one Michael the archangel. Ah, wait, brother. When... See? Yet uh, Michael the archangel. So, what is the name of this archangel? He is Michael. Okay. Now, why... It is mentioned in book of Jude about this archangel Michael. What did you do? Continue with that. When contending with the devil, he disputed dispute about the body of Moses, does not bring against him a railing execution, but said the Lord, rebook thee. Say, regarding the body of Moses. So, there was a dispute between uh, devil, Satan and uh, Archangel. Now, what happened to the body of Moses? Who buried the body of Moses? Angel. Very good. Why? 
If God would have allowed the people to bury the body of Moses, they would have done Mecca and Madina that time itself. So God did not want anybody to worship dead bodies. So God allowed the an angel to bury the dead body. But what happened in Simsa? There was a dispute regarding the body of Moses in Simsa between devil and archangel. You see, devil means who? Shaitan. Archangel means who? Jesus Christ. Now, why did uh, Satan come to take the body of Moses? Because he wanted to pull all the people of Israel for idol worship. But did God allow it? No. Okay. Regarding that one, why did God send only Michael the archangel? He could have sent any other angels now. Why? If God would have sent any other angels, what Satan would have done? He would have easily so deceived yeah. them. them. Correct. Now, in the first world, what happened? He deceived them to have, you see, huh? marriage with the human beings. Even in this case, if an ordinary angel would have come, he would have easily, you see, deceived them. Now, who is, there is only one angel who is powerful than the devil. Who is he? Jesus Christ. Very good. Because he is the bright morning star. Both are morning star, but Jesus is bright morning star. Hence, God sent Jesus. Okay? That is the reason in Daniel 12.1, what does he say? When Michael shall stand. You see? There should be a great time of trouble. Okay. Did Jesus mention about the great time of trouble anywhere in the Bible? There should be great time of trouble as it was not since the creation of the world. Anywhere it is mentioned, brother? On uh, first uh, uh, destroy of the world or second? Uh, I think in second. Uh, second. Matthew 24, 21, brother. Yes, Matthew sir. 24, 21, brother. Okay. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor ever shall be. Mm. See, this is speaking about Lord's second coming. That yeah. is the reason it is given in Daniel 12, 1, that Michael means a Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, okay, why that name Michael is given? What is the meaning of the word Michael? You see, Michael means M-I-C-H, Mick. And L. What is it? Mic, Mic and L. In Greek, L means God. Elohim, El Shaddai. What did Jesus say on the cross? Eli, Eli, Lama, Sabachthani. L means God. Eli means God. So Michael means what? You see, Mike in the Greek means image. So, Michael means image of God. Who is the express image of God? Uh, this Michael uh, was angel, the angel who fight with Satan. Very good. Okay. So uh, he's. So I think this My Michael is the is Jesus Christ is the same Michael. Yeah, brother. It's the same. That is the reason. Oh. The meaning of that name is actually image of God. Michael, the name means image of God. See? Oh. Mike and L. Michael. Correct now? Yeah. What is the meaning of L in the Bible? L means God. Elohim, El Shaddai, Eli, Eli Lama. Correct now? Mm -hmm. So, Mik means image. In Greek, Mik means image. So, L means what? God. So, who is in the image of God? Mm, Jesus Christ. Yes. He is in the express image of God. That is the reason this name is given to him. Okay? And uh, we read in Job 33 now. One among a thousand. Huh? An interpreter. Correct now, brother? Job yes. 33, we read now. Huh? Correct now. Huh? 
इंटरप्रेटर जॉब थर्टी थ्री ट्वेंटी थ्री रीड विद जॉब थर्टी थ्री थर्टी थ्री ट्वेंटी थ्री विद Yeah, it's here. Oh. Uh, if there be a messenger with him as interpreter, one among a thousand to show ah, of righteousness. Very good, brother. Huh? A messenger. What is the meaning of messenger? I just told you. Its meaning is actually angel. So who is angel in the Bible? You know what is the word uh, angel means in the Bible? Read Malachi two seven, brother. For the Bible, Bible is a dictionary. We should see what is the meaning of messenger in the Bible. Read Malachi two seven, brother. Okay, brother. For for the priest lips should know knowledge, should keep knowledge, and this should seek the law at his mouth, and he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. Ah, you see, he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts, the priest. You see, he is called the messenger of the Lord. It seems, sir. If priest is called the messenger of the Lord, why? Because in his mouth is the word of God. So similarly, Jesus was called the messenger or the angel of the Lord because in his mouth was God's words. Hence, one of the name of Jesus is called as Word. Correct? No, it says no. The Word was made flesh. Yeah. He is yeah. the Word of God. Correct? No, brother. Yeah. Uh, now why that word uh, word is called in the bible we need to see you see why it is given because in olden days you see whenever a king used to rule he used to have a huge palace and in that palace uh, there used to be a big court where the king used to sit on the throne and along the side the ministers used to sit and there used to be a big court and uh, whenever the king had to make a announcement So that uh, that announcement can reach to everybody. He did not shout loudly. He used to call a person who is next to him. Huh? Come here, come here. Then he would speak everything in his ears, and he would speak loudly on behalf of the king to the entire court. Listen, everybody, the king of kings, uh, the king of such and such a place, uh, is making an announcement. Uh, let it be. You see, uh, return. Let it be heard by everybody. So he would speak loudly. You know what was the name given to that person? That person's name was called as interpreter, or messenger, or Mister Word. Okay. Therefore, in the Bible, Jesus is given the same title means what? Whatever God. Had to speak. He was speaking only through his son. Hence, Jesus is called the Word of God. Hence, Jesus is called the Messenger of the Lord. Hence, Jesus is called Angel of the Lord. And what type of angel is he? He is not an ordinary angel, but uh, the leader of all the angels, the chiefest of all the angels, the Arch Angel. Understood, brother? Most of brother clearly? Yes, brother. I understood Good. clearly. Now. Let us read one important verse, John one one, John first chapter first verse. Hmm. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Very good, brother. Say, this verse says, "In the beginning was the Word." That means Jesus. Jesus is called Word. He was the, huh? God. Huh? What does it say? In the beginning was Word. Huh? Jesus is the Word. The word is Jesus. So Jesus was in the beginning with Him, sir. Okay, and He was with whom? He was with God. In in the beginning, uh, beginning was I think Jesus was uh, Jesus also a created uh, angel, no? Correct. Yeah. So here it has given in the beginning. Very good. Beginning, we'll see. I... Very good question. Super question, brother. Excellent. We'll see. What is the meaning of this? Okay, see okay. here. If you observe, it speaks about the word Jesus. Correct? No. So Jesus, ah, huh, was there 
in the beginning itself. That means Jesus had a beginning. Right now, Jesus has a beginning. That's this, as per this verse, in the beginning was the word means what? Jesus had a beginning. Correct now. Now, this Jesus who had a beginning was with whom he was with God it seems. Now, that God doesn't have any beginning. The Jesus who had a beginning was with a God who had no beginning at all. You see? Do you understand the words, brother? In the beginning was the word means what? Jesus had a beginning. And since his beginning, he was with God. Correct, no, brother? Mm -hmm. And it says that Jesus was also God. Okay? See, there's a difference between uh, Jesus and Father. Jesus had a beginning. But uh, God never has any beginning. Read Psalms 90, verse 2. Hmm. Before the mountain were brought forth, or even though heads from the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Ah, even before anything was brought up, you see, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Everlasting. There is no starting. You see? There is no beginning. It is only everlasting. Dear brethren, this is the one true God who did not have any beginning. And Jesus, who is his first creation and the beginning of his creation, was with that God. But the one problem in this verse is that it says the word was God. That means Jesus was also God. You know, oh, Jesus is also called as God. Huh? Now, what is the meaning of this one? Then in the Bible, many people, many things are called as God. You see, like for example, our stomach. You see, stomach is also called as God in the Bible, the belly. Read uh, Philippians 3.19, brother. Whose in is destruction? Whose God is their belly? Huh? And whose God is their belly? Oh, yo, that means uh, belly is God. Ah. The belly is Almighty God. Ah. Huh? It, I, it is symbolical. Ah, very good, brother. Some people do know. Huh? Worship uh, uh, is God. God is worship. Huh? They work only for stomach. Ka. Isn't it? Yeah. Because that is their God. Uh, that is the meaning. You told very good brother. Symbolic. That's not literal. Very good brother. Read 2 Corinthians 4 4 brother. Who is the God of this world? That every one of you should know. No, no, no. Brother, 2 Corinthians 4 4 brother. Uh. Ashish, brother, your voice is not audible at all. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believeth not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, which the image of God, should shine unto them. Very good, brother. So, the God of this world has blinded the minds of many. Now, who is the God of this world, brother? What's the brother? Uh, God of this world who has blinded everybody uh, so they could not see the gospel. Who? Who is this one? Satan. Very good. So, he is called as God in the Bible. Does it mean yeah. that he is almighty God? No, no. No, no very good brother. Huh? Read one more verse. Exodus 7, 1 brother. Exodus 7, 11. Hmm. Seven one. Ah, seven one. Hmm. 
And the Lord said unto Moses, See, I have made thee a god of Pharaoh and Aaron. The brother shall be the prophet. Okay. I have made thee a god to Pharaoh. That means Moses was a god to whom? Pharaoh. Does it mean that Moses is the almighty god? No. Uh, no. Read on my verse. Exodus 4.16. So, why he has given the title of God? Very good question, brother. We'll see that one. We'll see. We'll see shortly. We'll see. Don't worry. Exodus 4.16, brother. Correct, brother. Uh, this is how we read, said... brother. Awesome, brother. Very good. See, questions should come in our mind. We should keep on thinking. We should keep on thinking and we will reason it out. Then we will come to know the truth. Read, brother. Exodus 4.16. Yeah. And he shall be the spokesman unto the people, and he shall be even he shall be to the in, instead of a mouth, and those shall be to him instead of God. You see? Hey, yeah. Who shall be instead of God? Huh? Moses. Aaron. Yeah, Aaron, Aaron. Correct, Aaron. correct. correct. Oh, Moses. Huh? Aaron and Moses. Speaking about Aaron and Moses, yeah. and he said, you will be a god to Aaron, it seems, sir. Aaron will be your spokesman. And you will be a god to whom? Aaron. That means uh, Moses is a uh, god of Aaron. Uh. Yeah. That's what, that is, is it literal god? Then Moses is literal god. Uh. Then is Moses an almighty god? Uh? <laughs> huh? Yes or no? No. 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 Moses oh, is not almighty. Yes. Very good. Moses is not a god. But it is called as god. Why? Read one more verse. Psalms 82, 6. I have said you are gods. Uh, yeah. And all of uh, you uh, are... What, 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 brother? Read properly. I have, I have said you are gods. You but... are god, ah. You are Muslim brother, you are God. Ah, oh, yeah. Oh, you are God. Uh, oh, good. Then you are the creator. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we worship you? No. Uh, see, how the Bible is given. It says, yeah, you are all God. Huh? You see? Dear brethren, then why and what is the meaning of this one? See, the word God you see, all the verses, what you read, the word God actually means a superior one, a powerful one. You see? Hence, you see, huh? it says that uh, huh? Moses was God to Pharaoh. Why? Pharaoh is not a powerful. superior one? Uh, Pharaoh thought he was a universal God. God said, no, no, Moses will be more powerful than you. You see, the word Theos yeah, or uh, uh, El, El Shaddai, wherever it comes, you see, it signifies, uh, uh, you see, the powerful one. Hence, uh, these uh, uh, names are given to uh, so many people and uh, even Lucifer. Doesn't mean that uh, he, they are the supreme and almighty God. Lot of gods, lot of lords are there in this world. But to us, how many God is there? How many Lord is there? Read, brother. I huh? read huh? Isaiah 9 6, brother. Among all this God, Jesus is what type of God? Read Isaiah 9 6, brother. Huh? Isaiah 9 6. Hmm. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. See, this is speaking of Jesus Christ. Correct, no, brother? Yeah. So here, what's his name? The his name God. shall be called as Mighty? Mighty Father. Ma ah. Uh, yeah. What does the verse say? Mighty? Mm. Read that verse. Uh, why so tension? Uh. 
His name is Mighty God. Mighty God. Very good, brother. Mighty God. Does it say Almighty God? No, Mighty God. Ah, is there a difference between Mighty God and Almighty God? Ah, uh, Almighty God and Mighty God. Maybe, um, Almighty God is. The uh, Almighty God is given in many times in Exodus also. Very good. Yeah, in Mighty God only I think is given on this is a uh, is a yeah and this verse to define yes. Jesus Christ maybe. Yes. But uh, if two things are given, it means that there is a difference. Correct, right, brother. Mm, might I think mighty mighty God means uh, like 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 God or image of God. Correct. Almighty means all almighty. So yeah, all powerful. All powerful. See, so there is a difference for the Almighty God and the Mighty God. There is a difference. If both were one and the same, only one would have been given. If both are given, there is a difference in power. Isn't it? Next, what is it called? What type of father is Jesus? Mm, he, he is uh, everlasting father. Correct. Is he the heavenly father? No, no, no. No. Very good, brother. So this difference we need to understand. Many people bluntly they read the verse fastly and go and say, Oh, Jesus is God, Jesus is Father. No, no, no. Calmly read that verse again. He said, Jesus is all mighty God, not almighty God. Jesus is mighty God. Jesus is called as everlasting Father, not heavenly Father. So, being a heavenly Father and everlasting Father, there is a difference. In the thousand years, when all the dead are going to be resurrected, Jesus as a Father. He is going to give everlasting life for the entire dead world. And Jesus is called as the everlasting father. You see, though there are many gods in this world, unto us there is only one God. Read 1 Corinthians 8, chapter 5 and 6, brother. 1 Corinthians 8, chapter 5 and 6. Okay, brother. 1 Corinthians, chapter 8. Five and six. Mm. Mm. It's written here. For though there be that are called God, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be God, many and many Lord, ah, many. See, brother, there are many gods, it seems. Many lords are there. We just know, Sana. Billy is a God. Satan is a God. Moses is a God. Huh? We are called God. Huh? So the many gods are, many lords are there. Huh? Then continue with that. Huh? But to us there is but one God, the father of... Ah, whom... wait, brother. But to us there is one God? The father uh, of whom? Okay. Of whom are all... are all the things. And we in him. So this one we need to understand. There are so many gods. We don't disagree. But for us, there is only one God, and who is he? The Heavenly Father. Then continue with the next. Uh. Uh, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. Uh, and also there is one Lord Jesus Christ. You see, by whom are all things, and we by him. So, there is one God, who is the Almighty Father. You see, and there is one Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ. So there are two persons and two persons are separate. They are not one and the same. So this difference we need to clearly understand. Clear brother? Understood brother? Yes brother. Ah, so what is the relationship between Jesus and us? If you see Jesus is our elder brother. He said to the disciples no? huh? I am your friend. You are my friend. Huh? I'm your brother. Huh? Correct, no? Read. Romans 8, 29, brother. <clears throat> For whom he did fork no, he also did Pre predestinate. predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son 
that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Many brethren. Jesus should be the elder brother is himself. So we are all brothers to Jesus Christ. Read Hebrews 2, 11 brother. For both he that sanctified and they who are sanctified are all of one. For which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. Uh -huh. He is not ashamed to call us as brothers. Hence you read when Jesus was ascending to heaven. What did he say? Huh? I go to my father, your father. I go to my God, your God. That means both have same God, both have same father. Correct? No? That means Jesus is not that father. Jesus is not that uh, God. John chapter 20 verse 17. Brother. Hmm. Jesus said unto her, Toss me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father and to my God and your God. My God, your God. So both are having same God, same father. Isn't it? That means Jesus can never be that father. Jesus can never be that God. So there is a difference between, you see, almighty God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Correct, no, brother? So both are not one and the same. Okay? So... Kindly don't misunderstand that uh, we are uh, Jehovah Witnesses. We are not uh, Jehovah Witnesses. Uh, you see, because Jehovah Witnesses uh, believe that, uh, you see, uh, they don't believe in Jesus at all. But we are not like that, dear brethren. We are called as Jesus Loves Ministry. Without our Lord, without our Savior, you see, we can't do anything. Without him, we don't have any salvation. Without him, we can't even pray to God. Without him, we are nothing. But uh, we need to understand this one difference uh, that God is uh, totally separate than our Lord Jesus Christ. Both are not one and the same. Just to clarify these points, uh, we need, we had to take the class for nearly four weeks. You see, just a small point. What is the small point? Just to tell that Jesus and the Father are separate. Dear brethren, we had to spend nearly more than eight hours of time. So, this is a very important subject. Please listen to the YouTube link. I will also send a PDF as soon as the today's class is over. So, we will... See, in the next week, how this false doctrine, you see, how this false doctrine of uh, a Trinity, you see, is coming to the churches. You see, the Trinity, you say, no, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, they both are one and the same. Yeah? We just saw that uh, this doctrine doesn't exist in the Bible at all. So, Holy Spirit is the power of God. Jesus is the Son of God. And uh, God is the Heavenly Father, the Almighty God. So, the two persons are different. The Holy Spirit uh, is uh, their power, uh, you see, exercised through Jesus Christ. So, this difference uh, we need to understand, brother. So, so no misunderstandings. Any questions, any, any doubts you can ask. Brother. Any doubts, any questions, please feel free to ask. Brother, any doubts for any questions, brother? Uh, no, no, not yet, brother. Uh, our doubt has been clear. Okay. So, go through the notes. I'll send the PDF notes also, brother. And, uh, uh, brother, and, yeah, uh, lastly, yeah. I'm uh, so sorry yeah. I asked in this um, uh, middle phase. I yeah. want to know <laughs> oh, uh, our denomination, brother. <laughs> sorry for that. No, okay. No problem. Not problem. You can ask. See, you speak to us freely. See, uh, 